Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apatelli, your host. Today's topic and title is Our Justice System Attacked and Is at Risk. You know, we have a we have three branches in government, um, Congress, the judicial, and the executive branch. And they're referred to often as the um, check and balances system, where uh, one branch, uh, it's a check and balance. So no one branch gets uh, excessive leverage and power. And that's how it's been for quite a while. Well, guess what? When Donald Trump says that the judges in his uh, trials coming up, that uh, they're out to get them and it's a witch hunt, and that they're not acting as judges, they're acting as uh, biased individuals trying to get Donald Trump. Or Donald Trump says that the prosecutors are out to get him and it's a witch hunt. Or when Donald Trump during his administration um, takes advantage of uh, Obama's inability to appoint judges and he, he goes far and above to appoint extremely conservative judges to fit his, his style and his probably his loyalty test. Um, that's not good for America. Also, when he tears down the FBI and the Department of Justice and uh, says they're out to get him and uh, casts doubt on, on the objectivity of the FBI and the Just Justice Department. Or when Donald Trump installs um, his faithful lackeys, his loyalists, uh, William Barr and Jeff Sessions. Um, these are examples of attacking the justice system, reducing the credibility of the justice system, that all in all is not good for America, and that's what we're here to talk about today. With me is my co-host, Jay Fidel. Good morning, Jay. Morning, Tim. Uh, Jay, um, we, we've watched Donald Trump recently in court, and he's basically using his appearance to cast the court system and the trials as a circus, as a sideshow. And he did so today. He's, uh, he was told by the judge that he should, uh, you know, stop making a circus out of the courtroom and, and have some respect for the, the court and the court judge. Um, Donald Trump really didn't do that. Uh, what is Donald Trump up to? Hmm. He's running for president. And he wants to demean the court system. He wants to marginalize it so it doesn't get in the way. And he's been doing a very good job at that. So, you know, there, there was a, a, um, some commentators who, who uh, opined that um, all of his um, shenanigans in court and the possibility of his conviction and punishment uh, in these various cases um, would have no effect. Uh, and a, a lot of the people in Iowa felt that's irrelevant. We would vote for him anyway, even if he was convicted and potentially imprisoned. But we have, we have a guy here who is using the court system as a way to get closer to the presidency, which is really shocking, and because it means that he's, in my view, he's succeeding, and people are buying it. You know, outside of Donald Trump, and, you know, I will say Donald Trump has been quite successful, as you pointed out, on gaming the system and reducing the credibility of, of the justice system. But outside of the justice system, we have a couple individuals in the Supreme Court. Um, Mr. Thomas, Clarence Thomas, comes to mind, where they've accepted some rather generous gifts in um, behind-the-scenes payments, uh, if not indirectly, certainly some of them directly. And yet, that went nowhere. Those violations of ethics and how a Supreme Court justice should behave while on the bench, um, that has gone nowhere, really. I mean, it's—, it's uh, but doesn't it reduce the credibility of judges, and doesn't that have an impact on the justice system? Yeah, let me, let me go down the, the chain of logic on that. <clears throat> Donald Trump and his acolytes and his friends in the GOP, um, the, MAGA, the MAGA millionaires, you know, have been corrupting the Supreme Court for a while. <clears throat> and, and the most corruptible seems to be Clarence Thomas. And it gets to be public, and it gets to be public that he's involved uh, with his wife, um, who, who helps him, in, in my view, um, write these uh, ridiculous opinions that are neither the law uh, nor the president nor uh, caring about, you know, the, the, the people of the country. Um, and he, and he it gets away with it, and everybody sees it and knows it. And well, the abortion decision is a good example. Um, Dobbs really wrecked their credibility. And all these gifts that went to Clarence Thomas wrecked their credibility. So what do you get out of that? 
One is people don't have confidence. You know, and what did George Washington say um, in you know his farewell address and in his writings? He was very quotable. We don't realize it. Um, he said, uh, "Public confidence is the firmest pillar." Uh, of the administration of justice, and uh, or words to that effect, and and so um, if you don't have confidence in the judiciary, um, then you don't, you know, you don't believe in it, and if you don't believe in it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't direct your your behavior. What I mean is, if if you make it make a mockery of the courts, which is what Trump has been doing. Um, then people don't believe in the courts, and they change their conduct, and now they don't abide by the rule of law. Now, he's doing it because he wants to run for president. He is running for president. He's doing it because he wants power in the, in the old-fashioned raw sense of power. He's doing it because he wants to be a, a tyrant, a dictator, an autocrat. Um, but part of this the side effect is that nobody is going to respect the courts. A lot of people do not respect the courts. He says he's going to pardon all the people in the insurrection. Um, he pardons his friends who have no excuse, who are clearly guilty of the crimes they were convicted of. And so people say, well, if they can do it, why can't I do it? Um, if I can see a Second Amendment shooting, why don't I do the same thing? Um, and so I think I think what we have is a, a kind of virus, if you will, that starts with his attitude and the attitude of the judges that he has appointed, his, his loyal and faithful Clarence Th uh, Thomas judges. Um, and it goes to a lot of other people, not only his base, but people who can't feel, you know, respect for the courts anymore. And th that's a breakdown of enormous uh, enormous proportion. And if you ask me whether the justice system is broken, I would say, well, you know, to some extent it was not working all that well beforehand. There were complaints of, um, you know, racism and people did not feel they were getting equal justice under the law. But now, now it's way over the, the top. Now you can't believe in the justice system or anybody associated with it. You, you know, he did machinations with the FBI he did machinations, obviously, with the Department of Justice. He did, he did machinations even with the Internal Revenue Service, weaponizing that. It's the perfect lead-in to an autocracy, where he controls everything. And so the justice system is irrelevant. The justice system is marginalized. The justice system is broken. And as we you know, get closer, and he does more of this directly and through proxies, it will be more broken. And if he is elected president, God forbid, um, he will he will put the pennies on the eyes. It won't be a justice system. It'll be a Trump system. Um, and he, he will use every single institution around justice, including the ones that are already broken, as weapons against his adversaries and enemies, um, as weapons to enhance his own power. So this is a really serious problem. But, you know, Tim, we're already well down the road. We are. And you had mentioned, you know, the abuse of the uh, presidential power to pardon um, individuals at the end of one's term. Um, he's tarnished that uh, greatly and in his promise to further tarnish it by calling those convicted of the January 6th insurrection, uh, he calls them, you know, patriots or, or in this case, um, hostages. That's the term he uses, hostages. Uh, so let's counterbalance that. Did you, re did you obtain any sense of, of relief or uh, validation that the justice system is working because there was over 1,000, those that stormed the Capitol were actually convicted and or took the plea of guilty? Uh, over 1,000. Um, did that provide any sense that maybe the justice system is still working? I, you know, the truth is, you and me, we both follow the news, and there hasn't been a lot of news about it. You know, once in a while, a high-profile case with the Proud Boys and all that, you know, comes to our attention. But those thousand people have essentially, you know, faded off the screen. 
We don't hear about them. We don't know about them. We don't relate to them. Um, we don't feel that they are an example that the justice system is working. And when he gets up and says he's going to pardon everybody, and when people around him mischaracterize, you know, what, what they did and what happened on January 6th, you say to yourself, um, they're, it's, they're making it small. They're making it de minimis. They're, they're making it as if it had no consequence at all. So it's not only that the thousand people were prosecuted, it's that the whole shebang has been mischaracterized now. Um, and thanks to him, we have people who believe that what they did was right. Um, and even the efforts of the courts to prosecute them and try them and convict them and punish them are, are inconsequential. And, um, that, you know, that's the way it is. And, and it's the same process with Mar-a-Lago. We should talk about that. Um, and the, uh, you know, the, the case in Washington with Jack Smith um, and, uh, you know, the, the, other, the other cases. I, you know, he is, he is making a circus out of it. But it's not just to have fun. It's to have power and to minimize the effect of these prosecutions. Um, and so, uh, and he's doing it. It's effective. And, and furthermore, you know, he's got, he's working it at both ends. He's going to appeal. He is appealing every little issue, try to get it to the Supreme Court, even phony baloney issues. And in the Supreme Court, they're either going to rule in his favor or delay it. It will surprise me if they find, if they actually make a finding that he has no immunity, they'll just push it off, kick the can. Mm -hmm. um, and on the 14th Amendment, which you and I have studied so carefully, um, I, I don't think that's going to stop him. The Supreme Court is going to let him off the hook somehow, either by delaying it um, or by, you know, ruling in his favor. Um, so what he's effectively done, I mean, it's, you got to hand it to him. He has taken all of these cases, all of these judges, all of these, you know, prosecutorial authorities and prosecutors, uh, all of these witnesses, all of these jurors, the whole, even the court clerks, um, and marginalized them. Uh, and, and the people in general no longer have respect for the justice system. And that's what Washington was talking about. Um, so, I, you know, I'm very concerned that the country is— essentially without a justice system. Well, and let I'm, me hit on that point. Um, he's reduced the credibility of the justice system. Uh, to what extent is it reasonable for an American, be it Democrat, independent, or a non-MAGA GOP person, uh, to expect that there should be a, a, a resolution to these 91 indictments, whether Donald Trump is guilty or not guilty? Is that a reasonable expectation um, prior to the election? Well, he's, he's trying to beat the election. He's trying to de delay and defer the whole thing. And people are, you know, they, they see it happening, but what can they do? What can you and I do? Um, and, I, and I think um, his, 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 his intent is obvious, and he's making some traction. Um, I will only feel, you know, that the, there's some, some backbone left in the justice system if that trial goes on forward. If those trials go on forward, and they're supposed to happen pretty soon, um, but you know how hard Trump is working to derail them, and that'll be uh, another inflection point. <laughs> Sorry to use that term with you, Tim. <laughs> that'll be Can another you use inflection. It, often? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it keeps going the wrong way. <laughs> so, you know, I, I feel that the justice system stands between Trump and the president, presidency, and um, if, if he doesn't get tried, and if the trial doesn't, you know, doesn't have the marks of a fair trial, and if he doesn't actually get convicted based on what we know, um, I, I think um, I think it's it's got to be a failure. And I worry well, about that as part of his, his attempt to become an autocrat, and this is mm -hmm. a big part of it. How much damage do you think is done to our faith of the justice system if none of those trials come? Come to be before election day. Oh boy! I mean, it's hard to measure, and I guess we we would be guessing, but uh, I think there's going to be a lot of upset Americans that um, this didn't occur before before they cast their cast their vote. That's yeah, just my gonna, opinion. What are they going to but... do about it? What are they going to do about it? What are you you and me? I mean, you know, the the standard uh, advice is well, get out there and write a, an op-ed piece. You know, talk to your friends, uh, make make some. 
make some trouble, you know, um, have a protest, whatever. But th that hasn't worked so far. It hasn't stopped the railroad, is railroading the justice system. So I'm not sure. And I'm not sure that the, the media sees this the way, in general, sees this the way you and I see it. Uh, they'll, they'll report it, very matter of fact. Oh, yeah, the trial was delayed. Not, not indicating how critical that is. Not indicating uh, how that is going, as you say, to result in the loss of public confidence, which has all kinds of other implications. You know, recently we've been hearing reports, news reports, that kind of remind me of back in the 70s and 80s of, of, of South America countries where the judges in those countries were either being targeted um, and in some cases assassinated. Uh, we've, we've had a, a plethora of district attorneys and judges now who are receiving threats, and a lot of them. Um, kind of a, like a third world country, don't you think? Yeah, well, don't forget there was a judge, a federal judge, who's, uh, who there, there was an attempt to assassinate her, and instead they assassinated her son. They killed her son. Um, but it was intended for her. And when he does that the stochastic speech we talk about, when he does the, um, you know, the dog whistle thing, calling uh, on his base to take violence, you know, it'll be wild, um, mayhem and all that. Bedlam. Uh, I think the term bed bedlam comes to mind. Bedlam. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, if he keeps repeating that, and he apparently will because everybody's giving him a pass under the First Amendment. Uh, he's using the Constitution as a, as a weapon there. Um, I think there'll be more violence. And when there is more violence, people will be afraid um, to be jurors and witnesses and judges, to be afraid to even to be prosecutors. He's messed up the DOJ something awful. You know, uh, he, he switched around the uh, U.S., that is the attorney general, early in his term. Uh, he fired not one, but two uh, FBI directors and, and, and intimidated a whole bunch more and got them out of office. So I think, I think um, it's going to get worse this year through his proxies and his outrageous rhetoric. He uses the courtroom as a platform for that, right? And if he's elected, you know, forget it. We won't have a justice department. Uh, we won't have a justice system. Well, he came and gave us a preview of what his second term would look like um, by appointing faithful, faithful loyalists that would do his bidding, um, where normally a president's not even supposed to call the Justice Department or have any influence on the Justice Department. I'm thinking of Bill Barr, number one. Remember his, um, his contribution to the watering down of the Mueller report and how he basically cast all sorts of doubt and basically destroyed the credibility of the Mueller report. And um, that ended into um, a nothing burger. Yes. Um, or he, you know, he basically thought he had the full uh, cooperation of Jeff, Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions took his instructions about zero policy at the border. And what was the zero tolerance policy? That was the policy that um, basically separated infants and young children from their parents seeking legal asylum, yet that was done. So there's presidential influence on the Justice Department. So what he's done, he now, he now um, it's called projection. Remember the term uh, psychological projection that Joe Biden has now have influenced the Department of Justice and these judges to go after him with these 91 indictments. So Donald Trump's a master at projection. That which he does, he projects onto the person who hasn't done anything of the sort, yet uh, people believe him. And so what are we to do about that? I mean, how, there, you know, he has his First Amendment rights. Um, you know, the judges have made that very certain and very sure. And those, will, those that are First Amendment attorneys will say that's his right to do such. Um, is there anything to, to get in the way of that, to stop it? Well, Jack Smith has, uh, has filed briefs pointing out the effect of these remarks, this stochastic remarks, and that's why he's been arguing to, um, you know, to um, to shut shut Trump down for these remarks. But it hasn't worked because um, Judge Shutkin and and other judges are going to give 
the Trump have passed on the First Amendment. They're going to give them a wide berth, uh, thinking they're going to get reversed on appeal. It's interesting that the judges up there in the Supreme Court who really don't care too much about this, you know, Bill of Rights, all of a sudden um, Trump is using them uh, to enforce the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, in his favor. So, I, you know, I, I don't think there's anything much that we can do about it. The only thing we can do about it is have this show and, and other media have the show and, and point it out honestly and not be intimidated. You know, but, but in reality, uh, Trump uh, is and will do everything he can to pull funding uh, from news sources, uh, including print press, um, and make it hard for them to survive in, in, the, in these difficult times. So, um, gee, I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I don't think there is an answer for that, Tim. I think he's. I don't think there is an answer to it. I, I throw it out there just because, uh, you know, in some ways we're we're watching a slow-moving runaway train heading for the station, and yeah. uh, the brakes seem to be out. Um, I'm sure, you know, that which was considered protocol for for decades or centuries in our justice system or how we we look at things. Um, because it wasn't put in as law, uh, no one imagined that someone would break the protocols. And uh, I'm thinking specifically of, of um, when an appellate judge is, um, when they're going through the appointment process, and um, they check in with a couple senators of that district where that judge is going to be appointed. Well, the protocol was you checked in with the senators and, and see how they felt about it, about that individual that's about ready to be appointed in some cases for life as a judge. Um, that protocol, um, courtesy if you wanna call it that, uh, has been evaporated. Yet it, we are under that system for quite some time. And here's a case where the Trump administration just basically said, eh, we don't care. Right, that's a good example. Anyway, the result is the federal judiciary is all the way over on the right. Um, and there's no, um, what do they call it, a blue slip kind of consent by the Democrats to these appointments, and McConnell did his level best to deny Obama's appointments. And so what we have is a judiciary that's all the way skewed over to the right, and they're weaponized. It's, it's not a matter of um, you know, how good or bad they are as judges, they're, they're politicized. And I, th that is gonna hurt us so badly, not only in the result of their decisions, um, but in the but in the public perception of where they are and whether we can rely on them, and frankly, already we can't with a six to three majority in the Supreme Court. Um, we can't rely on them for anything, and they're the top. They're the top of the pyramid, so that everything you know under them is affected by them. And to say nothing about all the the uh, federal judges that Trump appointed, hundreds of them, hundreds. Uh, who are also likewise weaponized um, as uh, Republican judges, as Trump loyalist judges. I mean, look what's happening in the Florida case in the Mar-a-Lago. I mean, Cannon is a Trump judge. At the end of the day, she will do everything she can, not to the law, not to the people, but to Trump. And I, I, can, I cannot believe that Trump will be tried, prosecuted, convicted, appointed, and, and ultimately punished uh, in that Florida federal case, because Eileen Cannon is going to stand in the way. It's so clear. So well, not me, one off there, you know? Well, let, let's talk about that, because didn't she very early on uh, make some rulings that were clearly wrong? And um, she was, uh, uh, was it the 11th Circuit? I can't remember what what body of judges said, no, you're you're completely wrong. And she was admonished as a judge. Um, couldn't that happen again if she comes out with rulings that are way over, as they say, over the tips of your ski? Well, let me add a thought here, <clears throat> is that when Trump was uh, first running in uh, 2015, 2016, he was uh, um, unsophisticated in a lot of the things he did. Um, he didn't have experience in dealing with the public this way, dealing with public opinion. Um, dealing with the government, I you know I don't think he could have named the three branches of government at the outset, but he's had you know years working with his acolytes to become more sophisticated, and his machinations in court have become more sophisticated. 
his you know his outrageous statements his out his his um attacks on judges and prosecutors and the like you know that sophisticated because he knows that he might be able to generate some flashback pushback from them okay which will result in another appeal point for him pretty sophisticated now with Eileen Cannon before when she made these erroneous rulings it was quick enough so that um, Jack Smith could get into the appellate court, the Court of Appeals there, and, and reverse her. And the Court of Appeals was sympathetic enough, even though a number of Republican-appointed judges. Um, but now, okay, Eileen Cannon knows better, and Trump knows better. The idea is just to delay it. Delay it until he can become president. And then he can send a one-liner to the Department of Justice his new attorney general, and say, stop that prosecution. It's a bad prosecution. Can it right now? And he's the president. Uh, he has the power to do that. Who is going to stop him? The Court of Appeals is not going to be able to stop him. So her mission, as his mission, is to delay it all uh, until he can get to be president. Um, uh, you're taking me back memory lane <laughs> with... <laughs> Trump's disgust in Jeff Sessions when Jeff Sessions said, I'm going to recuse myself from this issue of prosecution. And uh, I think Donald Trump, to use a, a, a term that we don't hear often, but he went uncorked over it. He didn't expect Jeff Sessions to do that. Uh, so there's an example where Donald Trump's naivete or lack of understanding uh, was in play back then. But I agree with you wholeheartedly that he has become far, far more sophisticated and far more knowledgeable about the uh, workings of the justice system, the Department of Justice, and um, he probably won't make those mistakes twice. Yeah, well, he, and his stochastic speech, you know, his dog whistle thing, that's more sophisticated. And he has, he has a, a network, Tim. He has an organization around the country, and he can activate it the way he activated it um, with the uh, evangelicals, uh, in, in Iowa just now, in one handily. Um, <clears throat> so he can reach out and touch his base, and he knows who is in his base, and he can communicate with his base, and he can get them to do stuff. And if he needs violence, they will give him violence. And if he wins, that violence will be pardoned. So, <clears throat> and they know it. Um, you know, it's like when he offers to, pe to pay people's Defense fees is go beat up some reporter. I'll pay your defense fee. Yeah. That is a complete erosion. It's it's a, it's an open attempt to break the system. Yeah, that He's was 2015. I remember it well. Yeah, yeah. I, I you don't. Know, go ahead. Well, you know, uh, you know, these judges have a lot of leeway on on how they want to run their courtroom, and. Do you envision ever a, a, a time where Donald Trump ignores the judge and carries on the circus, so to speak, and the judge finally gets uh, fed up with it and says, you have a right to attend your trial, but we're going to basically put you off in the corner where no one can see you uh, or potentially hear you. Uh, do you see that ever happening with the pre former president of the United States where, in effect, in the courtroom, he's muzzled? Hasn't happened yet. But I would like to see it, and I think it should happen. And I agree that it could happen, because after what, a while— What would that look like? I mean, I, I'm sure there's, there's defendants that come in, and they scream and shout. Um, how are they muzzled? How are, how are they controlled in a courtroom, yet still allowed to be in the courtroom? Well, are they using video? Does it, is that how they're doing it now, video? I, no, I don't think they are, uh, unless it's, it's really, uh, you know— a kind of a dangerous situation. I don't know if they do that. Mm -hmm. um, but they could make a plastic, um, like Adolf Eichmann, you know, they put him behind yeah. Israel, put him behind a plastic uh, a plastic shield, and and it was, uh, I don't know if it was soundproof, but uh, it was at least um, some barrier. Um, the other thing is that the judge could say, uh, Donald, you know, you, you're, you're really being disrespectful. So that's 10 grand. They want to do it again? And uh, this this will be uh, this contempt. And if you do it three times in a row, um, I'm going to make it criminal contempt, and you're going to go to jail in the tombs under the courthouse, and you'll stay there until I, I feel that you're not going to do it again, um, and so forth. I mean, a, 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 
a, a courageous judge who's not worried about about stochastic speech against him, because Trump can go right outside in the front of the courthouse, in front of the media, you know, and he can say those stochastic things, and before you know it, the judge is uh, imperiled. But you know, I think there are ways that you could shut him up in the courtroom. Um, I'm not sure that that works, but that you you could do that. I think a lot of this, you know, Tim, has to do with the media. I, I really, you know, you always come back to the media, and I always come back to the media, too. They are giving him so much publicity. He's a master at getting them to cover his uh, obnoxious remarks. And the, the media communicates those remarks to his targets, you know, to the judges and the jurors and the prosecutors. That's how he talks to them through the media, and I, you know, I notice some media will not give you the the the, the sound file. Uh, they they won't tell you what he's saying, uh, except maybe a few summary words, and they'll just have the video of him. And that's a good idea. I, I think that the media is responsible for a lot of what we are talking about here. He uses them as a, as a platform, and they have really got to stop doing that. Likewise, the Bar Association, the lawyers, as a matter of protecting a rule of law, the Constitution, the democracy, the lawyers have got to have got to speak up, and um, they've got to condemn things that happen. They they've they've got to take a position, uh, including the American Bar Association and the state bar associations, and lawyers who are you know lawyers who are public figures. Some of them do, but not many. Well, we've said that for the last four years, that the bar associations have been relatively mum, silent. Yeah. Um, as we also said, the Society of Professional Journalism uh, has been quiet, mum, on, on, on the ineffectiveness of reporting. So um, in some ways, what you said earlier, unfortunately, sounds like maybe the case, and that is uh, the American public is, is helpless on, on watching Donald Trump slowly dismantle the justice system. Uh, I hope that's not the case. But uh, it does kind of keep me up at night sometimes. Well, it's, it's part of his march to autocracy. I mean, if there's no justice system to prosecute him, if these prosecutions don't work, if they get derailed, which is obviously what he's trying to do, um, then what stands between uh, him and autocracy? Not much. Not much. So it's really important to him that he do this. Um, he's done a really terrific job at um, corrupting, undermining the uh, justice institutions in this country, the, the justice officers, officials in this country. I mean, think of the poll workers who must be intimidated badly about the November election because of what has happened, including that stupid Giuliani case. Um, and, and think of the uh, election officials. Um, you know, who might or might not leave him on the ballot under the, uh, the 14th Amendment. Um, they must be intimidated, too. I'm sure they get calls. Yeah, but doesn't night. that jury award send a statement? Doesn't the thousand convictions of those uh, that participated in January 6th, 6th send a message to all future would-be insurrectionists and or um, people that want to threaten uh, poll workers? I wish I could agree. Uh, I, I actually think that Trump will, has told them or will tell them um, that he'll take care of them. It's, it's mafioso stuff. He'll take care of them. Yeah. And, okay. And Unfortunately, they, they I think you're right. Yeah. Um, any last thoughts before we uh, conclude today? <clears throat> well, I think the, you know, the way to solving a problem is the first step is to understand the problem, to know about the problem. And, um, you know, this is an interesting conversation. I, uh, I told you before the show, I thought it was a very important conversation because it, it hasn't been covered as such, as, as such as the deterioration uh, of the justice system, that, you know, the uh, examination of whether it's broken and how it got broken and the fact that Trump has done a lot to break it. Um, I think we have to understand that, not just you and me, but everybody. Once you understand it, maybe you can figure out a, a solution in which you are part of that solution. 
so far, it really hasn't happened. All righty. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it very much. It has been an interesting discussion. I want to thank our audience very much. And if you like this program, uh, please click um, follow and uh, give us a like. And until then, I'm Tim Apicella, your host for American Issues Take One. Mr. Fidel, thank you for joining us. And until next week, aloha. <laughs>